for that said. So it's fine. Um, how are you guys doing today? And you guys are great. So um, on this webinar, we're gonna make it fast and just like what we normally do, um, some analysis of looking at tomorrow and also next tomorrow. Okay, and just the way I trade, very, very simple concepts. And today I, I, I've been doing trainings for so many of my members that they came around. So um, just a very simple concept that in less than 30 minutes, I believe you are good to go. Um, you know, in less than 30 minutes, they are good to go. And then they got everything right. So um, on today's webinar, I'll just, let me share my screen now. And I didn't take any trade today because, uh, you know, we have a reverse on the DXY, so um, I didn't take any trade. That was lovely. Reverser. And I, I haven't taken any trade since on Monday. I don't really trade that much. I don't know what's wrong with me. But, you know, less is more. That's what I believe in. When there's a setup, there'll be a setup. So, um, so let's just go through some things. So I, I normally post markup and then I come back to see how they play out. Well, the thing is that uh, most people do look at my markup and they be like, they want to take the trade out and analyze, analyze it. And what I want you guys to know is, we don't get what we want all the time from this market. And you know, just like this gold, we're looking at 618 rejection of the simple and then what happened? But when you check where, there was not really an entry, you know. Um, there was not really an entry right there. And you know, when there's no entry, there's no entry. Why? Because and another thing I look at that most people don't look at, I look at the, the time also, and I look at how price got to 618, okay? Because when you see an impulsive candle, just like, uh, let me get into this. You know. Most of the analysis I did today didn't play out, but you know I didn't take any because there was no confirmation. So this, I, I, I want you guys to, can you guys hear me? Can you see and hear me? Let me know in the chat. I want to ask. If you can see and hear me, let me know in the chat. I'm using the, um, the internet I'm using is very slow, yeah? And hopefully we manage it. Can you guys hear me and see? Just let me know in the chat, so, cause. Yeah, it's on settings. I did my few on settings. Now, see what I did. We had this happening on the one hour time frame on, on gold. And, you know, I'm sure you guys know. So we had impulse, correction, impulse, correction, and then impulse. And then we're having the correction, which is obviously um, similar to this previous correction. If you can see, we had lovely correction right here. And you can see. This is more looking like it's similar to this. So look what happened. This is a correction. Can you see this is a correction? And let's just take it from there. And then what happened after the correction? We had this guy. This is a very strong, impulsive push to the downside. Okay? You don't want to say against that candle. No matter where price is, that is a very mad, strong, impulsive candle. So there's no point for me to get involved in that trade anymore because I was looking at this structure right here at the time. And then you see, we had some candles right there, but it was not enough for me because of how price got there. So if you are looking to trade the reversal, if you see an impulse candle like this, trust me, before you want to buy, you need another impulsive candle that will, that will even engulf or at least be a trader or even 50% of that candle. What I like to see is mine very, very strong. You guys understand? So you don't just rush to jump into a trade like that. Otherwise, you end up losing. So it's very important to pay attention to Kansas. Price action is everything. I was with some of my students today, and, you know, and I'm telling them, trading is very simple. All you need is just impulse and correction. Simple. You just need to find impulse and wait for correction. Simple as that. Okay? So we're looking at that buy earlier on using this level. You know, we had the 618 level right there, and then we had another conference. We have a structure right there. So you see what price did there. 
and then we, because how we approach. So assuming we go to that zone correctively, is a different case. Okay? So it is a different case. But anything other than that, you know. So yeah. So we we'll walk through all of that. So looking at DXY, and uh, you guys will see my old mark. So I was looking at DXY, you know, I was looking to say just like this what I posted on the chat today. I was looking to say because of the structure. And then another thing came up because of that structure, and I was like, though a um, couple of people lost money from this, and I don't know why. I said we are looking for retest. Some people were seeing this as flag, and then they used 20 EMA, and they used 20 EMA to say this is a flag, and then they press set automatically on USCHF, and then USCHF broke their ass. Why? Because um, why did that happen? The four-hour time frame, and it, it makes no sense to say. I saw this like in the afternoon. I had to introduce the RSI in, and then look where price is, right here, and then look where the RSI is, okay? We are already at the oversold territory. So if you are selling there, you know you are at your own risk and anything can happen. On the four hour time frame, the RSI is already at the oversold territory. Obviously it's a downtrend and we are still in a downtrend. If this impulse creates a continuation pattern, which is a flag, that's where we'll be going up on the one hour time frame. We are sure that it's gonna go up. But if we get an impulse back, then we are still looking to continue with the trend. It's as simple as that. So, but for me, this is a very strong impulse and I see it continue to the upside because we broke out of all of these structures. I uh, you can see what happened. So it is a flag, but you know, price already gone. So at that point, I wasn't interested in, I wasn't interested in doing the break and retest because even though you can see at that zone, there was no entry on one hour. So, you don't just set your limit order. That's why I don't take limit orders like that. There was no end. I needed confirmation candle. And then what happened? See how price got there. I gave up. Immediately I saw this candle. That was when I closed my laptop. Because I know for sure that this is a strong impulse. We are going to have that impulse. And we are not going to have that correction. That one hour correction today. This thing is going to go up. So let me just allow you to do this thing. Because this candle is very strong. And I'm still staying with the trend. So once I saw that candle, I was like, I closed my laptop very early because I knew, man, it's over. And then and I came on the way up. So it doesn't make any sense for me to buy at the closure of that candle because my stop loss will be below the structure. And if I'm buying there, that means I'm racing about 48 pips, almost 50 pips. I don't have that in my table during risk. So it's better for me to stay out of the trade. If it wants to continue to go up, then this is a lovely move for me to make money tomorrow. And you know, I'll make money for like two weeks if this creates a flag. Okay, so looking at USDC HF, what are we expecting tomorrow? Um, on this one hour time frame, you can go to daily time frame and see that daily candle how it's closed. That was a very, very massive, strong candle. And then you can see it's actually engulfed the previous candle, which is on Tuesday candle. And then you can see also from those points where we are trading on, we are having more like a reverser that we might see price push the upside. So this is gonna close. Uh, this DXY is gonna close soon and you can see from the dollar index, it's gonna close very strong because we already have you the closing and all of that. So from here, what we are expecting, and uh, this is just more like we have equal low and then price came to clear all the stop loss below, right here, you know, and then we want to see price start going back to the upside now because of this double bottom that price has taken or the liquidity down. So that is what I'm looking at more on this. Why I'm not? Why am I not still with the trend? Because obviously. Um, this is a downtrend, but I'm not in support of the downtrend at this point, you know, because we have indices of lower lows and lower highs. But why am I not in support? Because of candles, okay? Those candles are going to tell us what is happening, what, what direction is the market. Look at these two candles, see how strong they are, and then see how many candles, this, just these two for our candles engulfed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight four-hour candles 
to get to this price to for our country. So you tell me where is volatility in this market right now? You are the offside. So I will be looking for a continuation, which is obviously a bullish flag, you know, tomorrow. And then I'll be looking to buy in a situation whereby we get a strong impulse to the downside. Life is easy if we impose back strongly and uh, to the downside. Yes, we wait for a BF flag to continue with the trend. But anything other than that, this is a very, very strong impossible event. And you can see the amount of candles that we've closed. So what am I expecting a flag for a continuation to the upside? So I won't explain as the CHF because, you know, same setup with the dollar index, same setup. So we need that correction uh, for a continuation to the upside on the USD CHF and you know, the EU vice versa. So there's no point in analyzing EU. So I was looking at that buy on EU also at that zone, you know, look out of this zone and for our, I'm going to retest, you know, some were already in the buy, and, you know, because it's a flag. I don't know why they were buying and so it was there. But if you look at the four hour, we are in, we are trading in an overbought territory, as you can see. And we are trading in an overbought territory and you can see price actually right here. So I've lost money trading these in the past. So I'm very, very careful. Already. So I don't really use these apps that much, but I love to see price action. And you know, same thing. So that happened, and then when price rejected from that zone that I was looking at, there was no, there was no setup because we came impulsively, we broke impulsively. So there was no kind, which means there is no trade, no setup at that particular time. So what am I expecting on EU? Just like vice versa on DXY, break of structure. Let's get a flag and then drop. So that'll be on one hour. Let's get a flag and then we we'll continue to set those two candles. Very crazy. So let me know peers to mark up on on your chat. On the chat, let me know. On the chat box, let me know what peers to look at for. GDP is the same thing we're looking to buy today on the retest of that structure. I didn't post it because it was not clear and you know, that structure right there. And then price broke out impossibly. Same thing. Okay, there was no entry setup, no point in looking to buy. And you can see there's a shift to momentum now. We we'll wait for that flag potentially back to that zone when price refused to get to, and you know it depends on how it's going to correct. If we get to so that zone, that's a deep correction. I don't see price getting there. We might just get um, you know, tomorrow is Thursday, three last day, so we might just get a light shallow retracement and then we we'll to go. But anything other than that, I will update you guys tomorrow. Let's see how price action is going to. We are this night. So card JPY is yeah, card JPY. So yeah. So this is card JPY and what do we have here? Let's do a top one analysis, daily time frame on card JPY. What can you see on card JPY? Structure wise, no, I I then on that analysis. So, so price is trading within here, but you can see obviously what is happening on KJPY. This is a clear impulse to the upside correction, break up structure, it broke out of the structure, and then we correct the so confirmation to the upside. So we're looking to buy KJPY at this point. Let's go to four time frame to see my first structure. We are having series of higher highs and higher lows. And as you can see, where is volatility in the market? Strong impulse, correction, impulse to the upside, and then we're connecting to continuation to the upside. Um, I would love this to come down a bit before the takeoff. Um, this is for our time frame. So, what we're looking at, um, this is the zone where we have a new higher low right now, and you know, higher high, higher than this high. So, this is a potential higher low. Well, I would love to see it come down. If I should throw a feed on this one, guys, we are we rejected at uh, 782. Um, looking at it already, I would like to see it come more, you know, down somewhere around in between 618 and 786. Then it's going to make a lot of sense to continue, you know, upside. 
So I'm looking to see if this guy is going to come back a little bit more. And let's get that low price and let it continue to go to the upside. Okay? Because if you see what's happening here, you never can tell this is going to be more like correction to, but to come down before we take off. So looking at four-hour time frame, we are in a bullish environment and all of this are just correction. So allow price to get ready and then we're looking to buy. Okay. And then look to buy. So what I'm looking at again is the JPY. You know, we had this, we were looking for this setup for like two weeks. Price came there yesterday. I missed the first entry on EJ. I was waiting for this second entry. I'm just checking now to see. And that is more like a scoop right here and a double top bottom. You know, high probability trade setup having a double bottom on in an uptrend. The high probability trade setup. Not really much. Looking at four time frame, we just you can see that the currency phase, just like what we had here, price position sheet. We had more like this correction and cloning is done. So we are having similar correction. Right there for a continuation to the upside. So it's looking great already. And I'm going to take the trade right now. You know, stop loss below. I'm going to take it with a small lot size because this is not my section. And, you know, we are looking to TP1 at this high and potentially to the upside. Price relationship is there. And as you can see, how we corrected here. Price is giving us similar correction. And on four hour time frame, obviously, my brother. Uh, so creating a series of higher highs, higher low, higher highs, higher low, higher highs, higher low, higher highs, higher low. Well, the continuation to the upside and one hour time frame on EJ. Yeah, I was waiting for this to go right. I'm just seeing it now. I'm not a fan of setting it any longer. So that was that structure where we've seen price rejected, you know, multiple times. Uh, you know, yeah, about three times there, and then also, you know, resistant. In front support one time and then second time definitely looking good for a buy. Okay, because we had a double bottom in that one. So I'm going to take a buy on this after this call. And just to see how it's going to be a stop loss going to be below here anyway. Like not too much for it. I'm going to use smaller size. And I was going to take it after a rejection can be right here at this structure. But we already got that not looking back. So I'm I'm picking here this year and I'm real. I'm taking real JPY by tonight. Okay, so let me just see how that will play out because of the structure, and let me see how previous day can close. So I'll know what will happen in the chart section. Okay, close the bearish in back here yesterday. And this is today can be done. Let me wait for today can be. I'd love to see today can be create the day of the day before we go up. So uh, that would make more sense. I'd love to see it come down more and then looking to buy. I will keep a close eye on this and I will reach you guys on the quick chat. Mm, let's see you will end the day. Yeah, same um, broke up structure and then see what's gonna happen now you like kind of set up you I did not Euro card. Yeah, Euro card. You see, I had two set up. I think I showed this to the guys that came around today. What price did? We had two things going on. But what did I say at the end of the day? Uh, let me see. If they are on this call. So they are not on this call. I told them hair time frame all this way. Now, see, on four hour, on one hour, we had a flag forming. You know, we had a potential higher high, higher than this high, and then we had this flag for me, for a continuation to the upside, but I was like, bro, what's happening on the four hour time frame? And this guy is bearish, obviously, as you can see, and go to the four hour time frame and see what I'm showing you. That's why I said higher than him, because we, we're having more like price relationship right here. We have this kind of pattern, and then we just have a wider one of this. So I was like, bro, this is a flag, and this guy is gonna 
drop. But at the same time, we are not knowing what's happening with the one other frame, and then we had a little bit of structure right there of where we're finding us tested several times before um, something like that. And yeah, so after the inputs, so I was looking at this flag, let's see, let me see if we're gonna get a breakout of this or that, but just what goes down so I see higher than frame rate on this, but this is messy now for me. Um, I'm not interested in trading this, I don't think so because this beer is foolish beer. This beer hurt me last week, very foolish beer, for no reason, but it's fine. And I'll be looking at those beers that I, I gave you guys, but though I'll, I'll be waiting to mark up, you know. I've not really checked the market since, so I'm just giving it to you guys now. So I'm just looking at the market randomly. Let's look at this one, will make sense also if you create a flag because. I knew this is just to clear people that are ready to trade out. The main trend is pretty much still on the downside. So we are rejecting already. So let me see if we're gonna get flag and SD card to put a lot of SD card to be to uh to the floor also, same thing. Flag and then drop. So I knew all of this was I was actually expecting this to just add this section. Out a little bit, and then I swear I didn't check the chat again. Like when did all this happen? Six o'clock, so around, around five. I was already out of the market. You know, I don't like it there when I don't see entries around. You know, like one p.m., two p.m. So I just get bored and you know, some other things. Okay. So um, we've done that for good and. We were looking at um, we've done USD and in CHF. We were on the USD JPY. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I was looking to USD JPY to sell at that high. Not really my kind of setup, but I just want to see how it's going to react. So I'm not going to take that for sure. And then it rejected because initially I was looking at this structure, we're going to get a rejection. The price was going around there, yeah, and then you can see as company. It is an impossible move, just like every USD. Yeah, and this one will create a lovely flag. I can bet on USD JPY tomorrow. But let's wait for it. You know, it takes six to eight hours to complete, and we have a lot of time to just like to level or something. So let's wait. Let's wait for it. Okay. And is there any PA you guys want me to check on? Yes, okay. If you have any questions, you can ask. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm I'm kind of feeling sick somehow. So. Easy, easy. To be honest, I don't trade the USD. I'll rather trade SD USD. It's just me. I don't even trade I don't even trade anything. You can see the last thing I marked up on this thing. So long. ADJPY or this thing. I don't trade that. I'm trying to trade less. This our strategy works very well on GDP USD and USD. So you can see obviously one hour seven channel broken on AUD USD. As you can see, it's on higher time frame, the four hour time frame. Ascending channel broken nicely, so strong match can the downside. And those ones now are size gone. This this guy is already strong, push the downside. Signifying we're gonna get a little correction to about almost 50 or you know 48, and then we're gonna continue. To so um, we want to watch out for the flag. Wait for the orange flag to say, like I've seen this setup play out a million times in the market. So to so continue on the orange flag, that will be a short trade that I can bank on. You know, take profit one, you know, nice percentage. And if you flag, if you see a rejection there, 
of like 80 pieces or at least 50 pieces guarantee right? from this. So you just have to wait for the bearish flag to come take six to eight hours. And then you need to say, just like the BSY going up, so you know, good Friday go down. Now, the video is just remaining about four. I'm not, I want to drop everything at once. It's remaining about four. And once it's, it's, it's done, I'll let you guys know. So, if I can please watch with the overboard and if I saw the video called RSI Relative, Relative Strength Index. And, you know, we don't rely on that. We don't just trade that, you know, we just use that as additional confidence. I don't really use it that much, though. Hence the card. Okay, and the card, then that, that was the last one. I've already opened every card for you today. I said we're going to get a flag to continue with this downtrend, because, you know, this is downtrend, just like how this guy played us. You know, we had some like this. You can see what's happening. Look what happened here. Impose to the upside, what happened? Impose to the downside, flag, drop. Okay? It's like moving sideways. Impose to the upside, impose to the downside, flag, drop. Okay? So we're having similar thing here for the third time. Impose to the upside, impose to the downside, we're having flag to drop. So you have to wait for it. You can see it's happened already. Uh, let me get rid of this. It's happened already. One time, two time, and then this is the third time. To wait for that flag to move to this for the set. Okay, sometimes you have to look at this peer, you know, the peer you actually how how you get behavior in the past to determine what you expect in the future. Okay, so now we all for tomorrow. If you have more questions, um message me, I'm just gonna sleep right now and then I'll upload this video tonight for just put our video so that you can do that. So that you can do that. Yeah, thank you for joining, I really appreciate and the course is almost done and I'm working hard to get them done. So once it's ready, I start moving and very, very quality stuff. And you know, I always go straight to the course, there's no point for me to talk much and then go straight to what's necessary and do for the back. Thank you guys for joining me tonight and have a good night. Too.